everyone give thanks because our God is great. Oh, great is our God, and we cannot contain it. We sing from our souls, affected by His greatness. His mercy covers all. Blood 
out of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all cause Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Welcome to Moon Valley Bible Church Online. My name is Ricky Amano, 
and I'm here to share the message with you today. Um, the message is called Delighted. It's a study on Psalm 37, verses 1 through 4, although we'll dive further into some other verses to uh, support that. But um, first, I want to tell you a little bit about what's been going on with me. Um, you know, in this pandemic, I think a lot of us have gone through some different losses, you know, be it jobs or um, uh, family members or loved ones. And um, about three months ago, uh, I lost my mom. She passed away and, and went to be with the Lord. And uh, her name was Muriel Amano, and she was 96 and a half years old. So she did live a long time, uh, born in 1925, and she made it all the way to 2021. So um, while I miss her very much, I was very close to her. Um, you know, I know that she's with the Lord now, and he gave her a wonderful life for 96 years with my dad. And they were married for 68 years, um, which is a long time. So... One of the reasons I want to talk about my mom, it has a little bit to do with this message. And you're probably thinking, well, the message is called Delighted, but I'm talking about the loss of my mom. Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason is that, you know, my mom has a very special place in our family. Of course, all moms do, but in other ways as well, because it was through my mom that God's grace entered our family. You know, my mom was a child of Japanese immigrants to Hawaii. And um, so she was raised in a Buddhist culture. Uh, but she lived near a Christian church. And there were some missionaries who were in China who got kicked out uh, because of the war, World War II. <clears throat> and they were stuck in the closest place they could be in the U.S., which was Hawaii, uh, which was a territory at the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... So because they were there, they decided to start a church. And there was this church just down the street from where my mom lived. So they continually went over and invited her to church and her and her sister. And eventually they gave up and they went. And um, she went to the church and she found Jesus. And uh, she believed in Jesus for the first time. And from there, her faith just started to grow and she became more involved with the church. And she went off to college, not having even graduated high school because of the war. Uh, she got a scholarship from some missionaries to do a Christian ministry uh, major at a college in Texas. And she went and came back, married my dad. She took my dad to church. And my dad came to know the Lord, and they raised five of us. And I'm number five, so I'm the youngest. Um, but so mom has a very special place in our lives. So anyway, about... Uh, I guess it was the beginning of June <clears throat> where my mom was starting to have some issues. And the doctor told us then, um, and especially told me uh, even in more detail, that my mom only had weeks to months to live. And um, so what she shared with me was that, you know, you can worry about all this stuff. You can, you know, continue doing testing and aggressively trying to figure out what's going on. But she said, ultimately, <clears throat> it will not change uh, the time when she goes. So she told me the best thing to do at this point is to spend the rest of the time you have left and just enjoy that time and make it an enjoyable time for her as well. So I took that message to heart. And um, so I had to uh, tell my parents again what was going on. Um, the, uh, the doctor told them briefly, but I had to tell them in more detail, weeks or months, and to enjoy the time that was left. And my dad also took this message to heart, and he really took care of my mom and made sure she had a good time in the, in the rest of the months that she had left. She lasted a, a, almost three months after that. Um, I was very uh, thankful. I got to spend a lot of time with her. Um, sometimes I talk with her for an hour and a half. She'd be in bed. She looked tired. I go, "Hey, mom," and I'm about to say goodbye and 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 you know leave their apartment and go back home. We live just around the corner, and uh, she would start talking. And sometimes an hour and a half later, she's still talking, and we just talk about things. But she's she's a special person. She loved her family, like a lot of moms. But she also loved Jesus um, with all her heart. And that is what she 
brought to our family. And, and I don't know if I'd be here standing here, um, you know, wanting to share about Jesus if it were not for her and what happened when she was a teenager many years ago. And for 70-something years, um, she kept her faith and believing in Jesus and knew where she was going to go. And now she's there with Jesus. Her body's no longer um, worn out, and she's doing well. And um, we're just thankful for her and her life. And so um, I wanted to talk about now our message because, you know, in a sense, we're all terminal, aren't we? I mean, we all have a finite lifetime here on earth. We have a shelf life of some time that only God knows. And so because of that, should not we try to enjoy this time that we have left? And, you know, I look back at the past year, year and a half, and there's been a lot of stress. There's been a lot of struggle. Like I said, there's been a lot of loss um, for me personally, and I know for a lot of you. Um, and so how do we enjoy? How do we enjoy the time we have left when there's such struggle? It's kind of like the time that my mom had left. It wasn't all, you know, fun and, and enjoyment. It, there was a lot of tough times for her, a lot of struggle, which means uh, it was um, hard for us as well to see that what she was going through. And yet we could, you could choose to enjoy that time. You know, it's a choice that you make and a commitment to doing that. And so that brings us to Psalm 37. And sometimes when we struggle, you know, we, first thing we do is, what do we do? We tend to compare to others, right? Like, oh, they don't have it so bad. You know, we look on Facebook and everybody's doing great on Facebook, right? So it's like, I'm struggling. And they're, you know, even the people who don't treat people very well, they're not very nice, they're doing well. And I'm, you know, I try to follow God. Why is it so hard for me? Why am I struggling? You know, is something wrong with me? You, know, you can't help, I think, but ask those questions. So Psalm 37 kind of starts out kind of addressing some of that. And it says, Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers. For they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. So he's saying, you know, you see all that stuff out there. It stresses you out because you think, you know, what am I doing wrong or you know, why am I having such a hard time when everyone else is, is doing so well? E even the, you know, the bad guys out there are doing well. Um, and he's starting out by saying, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. God takes care of all that stuff. And you, there's no need to compare. It's only going to bring you down. And then he goes on to our main verse, which is verse 4. And he says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, this is a very well-known verse. And um, maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't heard it. Uh, but it's one of those verses where you tend to like, okay, that sounds great, you know. Um, okay, delight myself in the Lord. I'll, you know, I'll be happy uh, because of God. And then he's going to give me, you know, great things. But in the back of your mind, you're going, okay, um, why am I struggling then, you know? <laughs> or why do I not feel like I'm getting the desires of my heart? And sometimes people will say, well, the reason for that is to delight yourself in the Lord it means you're going to follow his will, so then your desires will be according to his will, so then he'll give you those things. And, and while that makes sense, you, it sounds a little bit like a con, you know? <laughs> it's like, can you explain it a little deeper? Because I don't quite get that. It just sounds like you're just rationalizing this verse. And so that's what I want to do today, is dive deeper into this verse and find out, you know, first of all, that word delight, what does that mean? Because, you know, I grew up in Hawaii, you know, we speak mostly pidgin English, which is not even real English. Um, so we don't use words like delight. I mean, I don't, maybe that's an older term as well. Maybe you don't as well. Um, so I looked up, what does this word delight mean? Well, in the English dictionary, the dictionary, in the Webster's dictionary definition, is delight is to take great pleasure. I say, okay, I, that's kind of what I thought. I've seen people in movies use that word, you know, mostly rich, sophisticated people say, I'm delighted, you know? <laughs> um, and it's usually something they like. So that, 
doesn't seem to tell me a lot. So I wanted to look at what is the actual original word and what does it mean? And so, you know, since the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, the Hebrew definition of the word, well, first of all, the word is hit anag, hit anag. And what that word means actually is make soft, pliable, and live in enjoyment. And I think what does soft and pliable have to do with living in enjoyment? We understand the enjoyment part in delight, but where's the soft and pliable? Where does that come in? Um, and we'll find out as we go on. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to do is, is give you kind of this analogy. You know, I'm sure a lot of you, you know, through the pandemic have been doing a lot of Netflix or some kind of binge watching of some kind. So one of the shows that my wife and I watch is, I can't even think of the title of it, but it's one of those where people go on these, they stay at these different vacation rentals, you know, and they, they experience it and you get to see them, you know, trying these different things in different places all over the world. And, um, and they'll tell you what they think of it. And uh, anything from houseboats to, you know, homes to condos to castles to, you know, all kinds of huts and all kinds of things all over the world. There was one that we saw just a couple weeks ago that really caught my eye. And it was, it looked like a castle. It, it, to me, it was almost like a castle. It was kind of in the, the wine country in, in Northern Cal. And uh, so they went to this place and it was pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm not a fancy, you know, guy. Like if I go to some place that's expensive, I feel a little intimidated. <laughs> I feel like I can't touch anything, you know, <laughs> like I got to keep my hands in my pockets, you know, so I don't break anything. Um, but this place was different. It was very expensive. It was actually $50,000 for two days. <laughs> so <laughs> it was very expensive. But, you know, sometimes they put money into places and it intimidates you. You know, they want you to see how much money they spent on this place. Sometimes they put money into places and it just draws you in. And that was kind of what this place was like. And I remember when they went to this, um, this one bedroom, you know, there's three people and this one gal went to see her bedroom and it was probably the size of our entire house, you know, where we live. And um, it was huge and it was majestic, but something about it was just very warm and inviting. And, and you could see when she walked in, you know, she didn't bring anything with her. She just walked in, and she could just see on her face like she was just in awe of this place. And it's a different kind of awe because when she went in, she would describe how the colors and the walls were stone, but it wasn't like a dark, cold castle. It was very warm and inviting. Like she said the colors made her feel calm. It was very calming. It brought peace to her. You know, and of course, it's a big, big old stone castle, so... It's very safe, um, but also, you know, she at one point she just fell back on the bed and just laid there, and she started crying. And so this other guy came in and said, "Why are you crying?" And she said, "Well, it's it's like home, you know." So she felt like this is a place that was calming, it was safe, and it was a place where where I belong. And it just overwhelmed her, and. You know, I think that's kind of like what they mean by when he says, delight yourself in the Lord. It's coming to meet the Lord and being open to take it all in. And when you get there, you realize just the awe of God and the safety that you have with him, the protection and the comfort, the peace that you have with him and the sense of belonging like I'm his child. Like, he's my father, and this is where I belong. This is home. And you kind of forget about everything else that you have because you walk in, like in this show, you walk into this room, you forget even, you know, what luggage you brought or what things you brought that maybe you thought would help you along the way, you know, your cell phones and things. You just go in this place and you go, this is all I need. This is home. This is, this is awesome. And when, so when he says soft and pliable, getting back to the meaning of delight, um, I think what he's talking about is, you know, you're there and, and, and like you walk into this place and you totally are blown away 
but you're, you know, I, I think one of the issues we have today um, is that we're so, uh, we've somehow taught ourselves that the only way to enjoy things is to make it happen. So in other words, anything I enjoy is because I worked for it, that I did it. You know, I saved up, I worked hard, I saved this money, and now we can go on this vacation. Or, you know, I, I worked really hard, and now we have this beautiful home. Or, you know, all the things that we enjoy, we feel like we brought it, you know. It's something that we brought. And what he means by being soft and pliable, I believe, is to let go of those things. Like, she didn't bring her luggage into that room. And I think because of that, she was open to just be blown away by it. Now, just imagine if she had brought in her luggage and she had, you know, her special clothes that she likes to wear. She has her iPhone and her iPad that she can't wait to get on and see who's texting her or who's on Facebook, things like that. You know, and if she did that, she'd be struggling with her luggage coming into the room, opening it up and looking at it, making sure everything is there. And, you know, if, um, if a bag got lost in travel, she'd be all stressed out and be worried about that. She wouldn't even notice the room, right? And she, that's not delighting in the room. You know, she's trying to bring her own delight, in other words, instead of delighting in the room. If we want to delight ourselves in the Lord, it means to be soft and pliable, to bend, to delight in what he has, and be flexible and moldable, and not bring in what we think we need to be delighted. So you see what, um, where I'm getting at? And at first I thought, you know, is this the real meaning, or is this, am I reading into it too much? I see this, so I looked to see what, where are other places in the Bible where this word is used in this way? There is another place, and it's in Isaiah. Isaiah 58, verses 13 to 14, um, it says, so he's talking about the Sabbath, and um, that when you come to the Sabbath, Sabbath day, it's a holy day for God. So to, out of respect for God, to put aside all of your things, this is what he says. If because of the Sabbath you turn your foot, that means you change directions, you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and honor it. Okay, and then listen to this next part. He says, desisting from your own ways, that's one, from seeking your own pleasure, that's two, and and speaking your own word, number three. So he's saying, because of the Sabbath, in order to make this a special day for the Lord, you have decided to not go your own way, not seek your own pleasure, and not speak your own word, which I believe what he's implying there is you're not in control. You're not the one saying, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it. Not speaking your word, then you will take delight in the Lord. See the exact same thing, delight in the Lord. It's the same word, hit anag. And he's saying, are you willing, basically, to delight in the Lord? Are you willing to give up your own ways, your own pleasure, and speaking your own word? In other words, am I willing to give up my dreams, my desires, my control, in order to delight in the Lord. Because he's saying that's what it takes. Now I want to make sure that you understand that this is not talking about salvation. It's not saying in order to go to heaven, you must give up this, give up that, give up the other thing. Um, all it takes to be with Jesus in heaven one day is to believe in him for eternal life. Um, he died on the cross for our sins. He paid the price. And he rose again and promised to take us with him if we believe in him. And so that's all it takes to get to heaven. But he's saying there's more and you're going to miss out on it without doing these things. And he says if you really want to live this life that God has, to really understand what true joy is and delight, 
this is what it takes to be willing to give up dreams, to be willing to give up my desires, to be willing to give up my control. Imagine you have, you know, we go back to that analogy with the castle. Imagine you brought a whole, you know, sometimes you see people at hotels and they have like a whole rack, you know, they got like 10, you know, case luggage. I don't even own that many, but sometimes they bring like 10 things up and, you know, the bellhop guy is all worn out from carrying all this stuff. And, uh, but, you know, we tend to bring a lot of luggage because, like I said, we like to be in control and we think these are the things that we need in order to have a good time. So we bring all of our stuff, you know, and, and sometimes we have all of our stuff. We think we have everything we need. And one of our luggage gets lost in the mail. I mean, in the mail, in the, in travel. Um, it got lost somewhere along the way. And when, when we experience that loss, it's hard to focus on what we're doing and where we're at. When we want, want to delight in the Lord and be in his presence, he's saying, are you willing to drop those bags? Leave them at the door and come in and experience all that God has. Um, so that's the analogy there. Um, I want to read you something because uh, I won't put it on the screen because it's, it's a bunch of words, and I've already thrown a lot of words at you on the screen. So, But there's a psalm just before Psalm 37, Psalm 36. Um, King David wrote both of these. And so in Psalm 36, he talks about kind of what it's like to be in the presence of God and experience that delight. So I want to read that for you, and I want you to listen to what he says. He says, how precious is your loving kindness, O God. And the children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. And when you think about refuge, I think about that castle, right? I think about when, when you're in the shadow of his wings, in, in refuge that he provides. What is there? There is safety, protection. There's peace because whatever's going out there, I'm safe in here. And it's, there's peace in here. There's calm. And the other thing is he puts me under his wing because I belong to him. This is a place where I belong. This is my true home is under his wing. And he goes on. He says, they drink their fill of the abundance of your house. And you give them to drink of the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come upon me. He talks about two ways where we can get distracted from delighting in the Lord, experiencing God's presence. He says, one, don't let me become too prideful, right? Because that will take me away. I need to let go of those bags. Let go of control. And, and the second thing he, sees, he says, and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the doers of iniquity have fallen, and they, must, they have been thrust down and cannot rise. He said, don't let others take me down. You know, I want to keep, I want to continue to come into your presence and find this delight that I have in you each day. So what is the big idea? The big idea is, are you delighted? As we talked about delight in the sense, um, hit anag, you know? To delight ourselves in the Lord, we must become soft and pliable. And what we talked about that, we said, well, hit anag, it means, you know, living in enjoyment, but it also means becoming soft and pliable and what the verses have shown us is that we have to be able to let go of control and bend as we come in and be flexible and, and allow God to provide our direction for our life, allow God to show us what is good. And remember in that verse I just read, um, he said, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. So we, when we are in God's presence, we see 
all of a sudden, you know, we see what is good, what is right. And, and he, this is the fountain of life. So, so true delight comes in God's presence, but only when we're soft and pliable, when we are able to let go of the things that, that we think that we need, the things that we think that we have to have, um, and sometimes we talked about loss, and when we're dealing with loss, you know, it's one of those bags, and that bag got lost, right? It's no longer with us, and it can be very tough. It can almost destroy us unless we come into his presence, and we find that there is still great delight in the Lord. You know, King David, you think, well, he wrote this, but yeah, he's king, right? So what's his problems, right? He, 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 of course, it's delightful. He's got lots of money. He's got everything under his command. Well, if you read about King David, he had a very tough life. Um, you know, he had to run for his life twice. You know, one by the king for him and one by his own son. And um, he, ha- he also dealt with his own issues, his own demons of, you know, he um, took in someone else's wife of, of, of one of his soldiers. And then he had the soldier basically killed in battle. Um, so he did some pretty awful things and had some very, you know, deep and dark sins to live with. And yet he recognizes, you know, that, there is delight in God's presence when we put aside the things that we have and we decide to enter into his presence, soft and pliable, to just walk in and just take it in and go, wow, this place, it's so calming, so peaceful. You know, this place, I feel like I belong. And in this place, in God's presence, I feel safe. And this is home. You know, this is where I belong. And when you come to that point of delight, then you will see that God gives you the desires of your heart. Because those desires tend to change when you drop your bags, right? Um, And I know dropping the bags sounds easy, you know. It is when you go to a hotel and you drop your bags. But in life, that's a really tough thing. It can take, you know, a lot of um, good counsel from friends, you know, Christian counselors. We may have to call in at times. Um, And it may take time. And it may take continual prayer with God, asking Him to help you through this. And that's okay. That's part of coming into His presence, you know. I I didn't say to leave the bag downstairs. You still bring it into the room, but you let go of it. And and you allow God to help you work through those things. And sometimes God provides people to help you, and that's the way that God helps as well. So don't deny the help of others. Um, Know that God is with you. And, um, you know, if to delight in the Lord, we have to ask ourselves, you know, am I willing to give up my dreams in order to take on God's dreams for me? Am I willing to give up my desires into, in order to take on God's desires for me? A- am I willing to give up control in order to allow God to control my life? That is what it takes to delight in the Lord. And it's not a bad thing because, as you may have found, we don't know many times what is the right thing for us. We think something will bring us enjoyment and we pursue it and we spend a lot of time, energy, and money to do that. And then when we get there, we realize that wasn't really what I needed. So we can skip all that. We can go right in God's presence. And he knows what we need. He knows what brings the desires of our heart. And when we enter that room, we're in a place where we are known fully. You know, from before the time we were born, He has known us and He has created us. 
And to give up those things is completely worth it. Um, I know in my life I have suffered some loss. I have um, had some dreams that, you know, God basically told me to walk away from. And, and I did, and at the time it was very painful and it was very tough. And I was depressed for the, you know, the weeks after I gave those things up. Um, but what I have found as I look back 20 years later is that God's dreams for me and God's desires for me are far better than anything that I ever thought or could imagine was good for me. And, you know, I have struggled many times. Um, I think coming into God's presence and, you know, putting aside our control and our desires and, and our dreams is a continual process in life, but I think it's a process worth doing um, because then you look back and you see how God has unfolded his whole plan for us. And, you know, you may feel like uh, right now, you're devastated by a loss or you're devastated um, by where life has taken you to this point. And I would encourage you that, you know what? You've tried it one way. Try it this way. Come into God's presence, you know? Meet up with him in prayer each day um, or many times a day, you know? Uh, and just... Say, hey, Lord, you know, I've been doing all this stuff. I got all these bags. I just want to lay them here. And I want to enter into your presence. And I want you to take my life and show me the way, you know. Um, I truly want to follow that. And I'm willing to put aside all these other things in order to follow you. Will you show me the way? And I believe if, if you sincerely do this that God will show you and and he has shown me many times and I'm I'm not no great spiritual person like I'm said I'm just a kid of a you know a grandchild of an immigrant born on a little island you know um, I'm a very simple person but the reason I share this is with you is because of what God has shown me and um it's, it's the way that my mom lived, and for 70-something years that she knew the Lord on this earth, um, she never wavered from that. And I know why now, because she has taught me to do the same. And, and I see when you are exposed to who God is, I mean, we have only seen a fraction of him still, but even what you can see here, um, what God shows you in his presence when we let go of our own things. Um, it will blow you away. It will change your life. It will put you on a different course. And um, I encourage us all to do that. And I thank you for listening to me. Um, and uh, I pray that God be with you and that you will seek him daily. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this time. I thank you that, you know, you showed us your love and your grace by saving us. And even though we have sins in our life, you have forgiven them just by us simply believing in you for eternal life. And we thank you for dying on the cross, for paying for our sins, that we can live a new life. But I also thank you for offering a new way to do this new life. A way where we don't have to be in control anymore. Where we can go to you as you created us, as you have proven that you love us, as you have proven that, that we are special to you. Um, Lord, help us now. Help us to come into your presence. Help us to put aside those things that weigh us down. All the things in, in our, our bags, our, our dreams, our desires. You know, I know it doesn't mean that we won't get the things necessarily, but whatever we do 
find um, in our future what you have for us is good for us and we can trust that because you know us so well and you love us so much. And I just thank you for allowing us to come into your presence each day to be, be able to delight in you. And I thank you for the love that you have given to us each moment of each day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.